multimedia event that you guys have probably seen a lot of is going to be taking place at the Steamboat Grand on November 21st through the 23rd. That's the weekend before Thanksgiving, so you can put that on your calendars now, okay? Okay, so with that, I'm now going to introduce what we call the Pirate News. Now, the Pirate News this month is sponsored by All That Jazz. All That Jazz is Steamboat's source for music, concert tickets, clothing, novelty items, and much, much more. And with that, yes, thank you. And with that, we're going to turn it over to our chief parks, trails, and tax dollars correspondent, Eric Leach. Thanks, Todd. I am trendily paddleboarding down the Yampa River on a busy Friday afternoon. Glad enough to stop and answer a few questions. There's some folks from out of town lazily enjoying the river. So, what are your names and where are you from? I'm Richard III. This is my lovely wife Mimi and our little <laughs> We're here on holiday from Greenwich, Connecticut. Wait, your name is Dick? Yes, Dick III and all that nonsense. We did this last summer. Oh, sorry. Moving on then. So what brought you two out here tubing on the river today? Well, actually, we won a charity auction bid at your little Strings on the Mundane fundraiser. <laughs> yes, it was described as an exotic river cruise, looking at prime real estate, and gourmet meal, and complimentary cocktails. But it's been nothing of the sort. That's right. We thought we'd be doing some proper sailing, but then we heard your yacht club closed. <laughs> but all we got were these tubes from Fritz over at One Stop Ski Shop, some sandwiches, and a can of Pep's the Blue Ribbon. That's PBR, Dick. <laughs> And all the prime real estate just seems to be some trailer parks and crowded bars like the Sweetwater Grill. <laughs> Seriously, I would complain to Jay Haggart right now if I didn't want to get my iPhone wet. <laughs> so, where are you from? We went over that. We're from Greenwich, Connecticut. Seriously. All right. So, so we decided you to decided go. to go tubing down the yes. river today anyway. <laughs> Indeed, because we'd already paid for this thing up front. $20,000. Yeah. <laughs> Pennies for us. 
But anyway, <laughs> we decided, you know, that we would discuss this over a proper meal of foie gras and escargot, which our traveling butler Maurice made for us. <laughs> oh, he's such a dear. Anyway, so we thought it might be kind of cute to see what it would be like to live like locals for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and to see how it feels. So, how does it feel? Absolutely barbaric. <laughs> My posterior keeps bumping up these rocks that are littering the entire river. There's poor people who smell like sulfur everywhere. <laughs> And I think my toe touched a fish. Uh, I'm gonna vomit. Uh, Maurice! Maurice! Quick, quick! Yes, ma'am! Thank you. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, and for you, sir. <laughs> Anything else I can do for you, ma'am? Perhaps another push? Ooh. Would you care for any more ointment for your underarm? Too brash. Oh. <laughs> no, not right now, dear. We're talking to this nice TV gentleman. You continue waiting and we'll beckon you when we're done. But don't forget, it's almost time for Snooky Snacks. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Very good, Mom. I'll have the bacon niblets prepared and the caviar, and then I'll scout ahead for any turbulent waters. <laughs> oh. So glad we brought Maurice. What would we ever do without him? Uh, drown face first in this godforsaken river. What a bourgeois way to perish. <laughs> Pardon me! Oh, oh. Would you have any gray poop on you? <laughs> cameras over there, oh. but you just scared off my interview. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> they was lame anyway. You should interview us, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and you are... Roscoe Tuberelli. <laughs> oh, yeah. ah. and, and this here's my wife, Skinky. <laughs> nice to meet you, Mr. TV Man. Call me Eric. No, actually, don't. <laughs> so, so where are you from? Vicksburg, South Route, <laughs> So you drove up here for a nice afternoon of tubing on the river? <laughs> Hell no, man. We've been tubing since late last night, buddy. <laughs> Listen, we load up the cooler with beer, purchased from Steamboat Discount Liquors. <laughs> We hopped in the Yampa right near Phippsburg, man. We've been paddling and trawling downstream ever since. From Phippsburg. That's right. Now, it was a bit tricky getting across that stagecoach reservoir with our hands, but sliding down the dam was awesome! <laughs> and did you say something about trawling? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I dropped my net a few miles ago, man. I've been picking up bottom treasure. <laughs> yeah, I'm like a shrimping tube. <laughs> let, me, let me show you what I got so far, man. Oh, where, where the heck's my thing? Reach, reach, yeah. All right, check it out. Listen, I got like a, it's like a wedding band. For me. First time. I know. Yeah. It's a watch, there's about seven pairs of sunglasses. And three uncracked beers of varying ages. 
all cold and very drinkable still. <laughs> Impressive. And so how far do the two of you plan on going? Oh, uh, two of us? Nah, we brought our baby, Brittany Lee. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> She's just hanging out. She sucks on some boob every now and then when she needs it. Yeah, like a gal. <laughs> <laughs> you brought a newborn baby tubing on the river. Of course. Last time we left her at home and she was real pissed. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, cry, 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 wah, wah, wah. It's terrible. Doesn't that seem a, a wee bit dangerous? What do I look like, some kind of bad mama? Yeah. <laughs> Made sure she was seaworthy before we left. That's right. <sighs> seaworthy. And how exactly did you do that? Piece of cake. Here, hold my beer. Let's see. We just wrapped her up in some bubble wrap, a little duct tape, <laughs> put a string on her foot. Mm. Perfectly good to go. <laughs> that baby will float for miles. And listen, yes. if she happens to flop out face down or something dangerous. That's why I brought this here spatula. <laughs> <laughs> right. Check this out. Oh, baby, I got you. Bam! Perfect! Yeah. Works every time. She flow right on, man. We're totally safe. We're good. <laughs> wow, that is the worst thing I have ever seen. This is Eric Leach signing off for the Pirate Theater Monthly Daily Show. I think one of the things that really makes us unique is our outdoor fire pit. It just it feels good and it creates this environment where everyone feels a part of something. And you turn to people, you meet more people, you, you socialize more. Again, a city where the fire pit is right on the river. We, we get it going year round as soon as the sun goes down. You know, it's a year round event. joining us for this special guest interview sponsored by Josh Kagan and Cornerstone Home Lending. What's the difference between the Steamboat Springs Police Department and the Route County Sheriff's Department? Like who gets to arrest what? <laughs> well when it comes to arresting folks we, we, we get to share in that so we get to arrest people for the for the exact same things. The big difference with a sheriff's office uh, is that the sheriff is actually an elected official and so each and every elected uh, or, or a citizen gets an opportunity to, and they have a say in who their sheriff is, their, their uh, law enforcement official for the county. So, so you started off as, as a police officer, so what dis made you decide to go into the public office of having to be elected to become a sheriff? You know, uh, I still ask myself that question today. <laughs> uh, it definitely wasn't for the salary, I can tell you. And, uh, you know, I don't even like politics and, and I don't like being the center of attention. <laughs> Not uh, obvious right now. <laughs> <laughs> Public speaking was my biggest fear. But uh, anyway, I'm starting to, to get over that. See, we're here to, to help. We're here to help. I appreciate that. Yeah. But, uh, but, you know, I, I worked for the police department. I worked for a police department in Florida for about 13 years, and then I came here and worked for Steamboat for a couple of years, and then I went to work for the sheriff's office. And, and after working uh, with the sheriff's office, um, I thought there was just some areas that could use a little bit of improvement and uh, in 2006 I ran for sheriff and uh, I lost that election but then uh, uh, I, I, I don't take defeat very well so I figured I'd give it one more, one more uh, try and I'm a slow learner but, but anyway <laughs> hey you know what uh, I prevailed this time and yeah. here I am so um, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely been a, a venture. So speaking of ventures once you got into the public eye there has been some controversy lately I don't know if you've read a newspaper in the last five months or so, um, talking about your stance on the, the new gun control laws that were passed in Denver. Right. Now, those were uh, two new gun control laws. One law increased the requirements for background checks, and another law uh, limited gun magazine capacity to 15 rounds. And you went out publicly and stated that you felt these laws were unenforceable and that um, there wasn't anything you could do about it. You made a public stance and said that this was something that wouldn't work for you. About January, um, we 
or I was asked, and several other sheriffs were asked to come and testify as expert witnesses before the state capitol over these over these bills. There were actually there were seven different bills, and so I really got uh, I dove into these bills and, and got intimate with them, trying to trying to learn everything I could about them. And they they were so poorly written and they were very problematic mm -hmm. from the standpoint of a law enforcement officer trying to enforce them. Uh, there were uh, the wording in there you could you could it was obvious that the the words that were in these bills that they had not uh, seeked any uh, advice or uh, help and when they were drafting up these bills from law enforcement and they were just extremely problematic and so. Uh, there were there are a lot of sheriffs out there that, that kind of got off on this constitutionality of it, and and I share some of those beliefs. Um, but besides that, uh, when we were there testifying, uh, the state legislature they they would go back to the drawing board for a few things, but then the things that were really near and dear to our hearts that were were so problematic um, that they weren't willing to go back whenever they were it was in its committee stages and and revise it. So. They passed the law, and then we ended up having to make a public stance. I say we, me, well, there's 64 elected sheriffs in the state, and 55 of the 64 have made a public stance against this. And so uh, we even filed a lawsuit against the governor and the, uh, to try to get some of this uh, straightened out. <laughs> so so now, that, now that the sheriff's explained himself, he's kind of almost as much, maybe as famous for unenforcing a law as he is for enforcing law. So we've come up with a game we call Enforce or Not Enforce. <laughs> and just to clarify. Yeah, just to clarify, I'll, I'll bring this up, I'll say this. Sheriff Wiggins is not bound to any of these positions in any legal way. This is merely for entertainment purposes and he should not be held accountable for what he's about to say. <laughs> Okay, ready? Enforce or not enforce? First, the easy one. Colorado laws 1224 and 1229 about the aforementioned new gun control laws. Enforce, not enforce. Not enforce. Okay, that was the easy one, I told you. The next one is Amendment 64, which is the newly passed legalization of marijuana in small amounts. We consider, now this is careful, there's some wording here. We consider enforcing this law doing nothing. <laughs> so, if, if you find if you find someone with the proper amount of marijuana, enforcing that rule is doing nothing. The not enforcing is trying to arrest somebody for doing enforce. that. So, is that enforce or not enforce Amendment Sixty Four? Enforce. enforce. <laughs> The next one is one that we all kind of want to know about because this happens all the time on Lincoln. Jaywalking. Yeah. Wait, and I want to be clear. We're not talking about when it's not very busy. We're talking very busy. Someone just bolts across Lincoln when they really shouldn't be. Do you enforce or not enforce? I think they're self-regulated. So. <laughs> My name is Fawn and I'm the executive chef at Sweetwater. Um, we change our menu seasonally and we try to cater to the things that are available to us in Colorado. What's going to be the most fresh when I get it and what's just available in the Rocky Mountains. So hey, it's Kelly with KPA Productions. Do you or anyone you know need a video created by KPA Productions? If so, don't wait another minute. Visit the professionals at kpaproductions.com. We love to use our creative and technical expertise to capture your projects. We're ready to videotape you.
attention, please. Thank you for joining us for this free performance of the Rednick Theater Festival. Donate or cheapskate. And that's what I mean by free, y'all. See, work it up. Now see. Beer money for us. <laughs> I'm your host tonight. Probably got these tickets for free. I know you can do uh -uh. My name is Dirk Handlejob. Cash. <laughs> no, it's Stuart Handlob. You hack. Handjob was my high school name. Pass that down to the Stuart, what are you doing here, Stuart? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Stuart. <laughs> Lesbians has come. Oh, yeah. Lesbians. Lesbians. Excuse me. Mm. Our merry little band of traveling lesbians. Right? That's an important difference. Yeah. Those are two very different words, right? Yeah. Anywho, we've come all the way from Northwest Colorado to your country. New Zealand of all damn places. That's right. That's right. New Zealand to help spread the redneck culture to all y'all dodos. Excuse me again. Y'all kiwis, right? Kiwis. My bad, okay? They are similar, dumb looking, flightless birds, right? Yeah. Of course, only one's extinct so far. But since we've been on this island, We've been on a few kiwi hunts already, yeah, and they are the easiest damn kills we've ever seen, man. Oh, they're so yummy, oh, too. God, so they taste Come like fun. What? It's illegal to eat kiwis. Yes? Oh. <laughs> Didn't, <laughs> Didn't fry it. Excuse me again. We have one other very important correction. Yep. We have not, nope. I repeat, have not neither killed nor eaten any of y'all's precious kiwis, okay? I clearly misspoke on that front, all right? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right. Without further adus, the Redneck Theater Festival presents Shakespeare in the Trailer Park. <laughs> But saw what lie through yonder window breaks. Wait, is that a TV up in her trailer? Man, I need to get that window fixed. It must be drafty in there. It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Actually, you know, she's kind of more like a black hole than the sun. Oh, massive one. I heard that. Sorry, man. <laughs> Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon. Actually, the only moon I want to see is Juliet's pasty dare air. Woo! Hey. <laughs> Who is sick and pale with grief, but not as pale as my Juliet. Oh, except for these forearms and neck, which are a beautiful beer brown. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry, baby. My lines. Oh, Romeo! Romeo! Wherefore out thou, Romeo? Now, seriously, where are you? I've been sending you booty call texts all day. I almost sent one to your brother. Dan? Dan. Dan. Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Because everybody knows that your father is just some jack off and your real daddy's a UPS guy, anyways. FedEx. Oh, FedEx. FedEx. Same thing. Or if thou wilt not be but sworn my love, and I will no longer be a Capulet. However, I did bring some capsulets, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Go down real good with a fifth of Jack Daniels. Oh, Here, you got a beer. Shall I hear more? Or shall I speak at this? Shall I go get myself a beer over in that crew? Because I am thirsty. Mm. Oh, hold on. Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Well, your name and your whole family ever since I stole those capsules I from your grandma. I told you not to do that. I know. She gets all angry. I know. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Like my caldy toilet that I get from the Craig Dollar Store. 
store. I shall take thee at thy word. But you know, the last time I took you at your word, you ended up cheating on me with that inbred fool, Cutter Hawkins. Should have called me back. Should have called you back. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Call me love, and I will be new baptized. And henceforth, I shall never wear that Tony Romo cowboy jersey you think just looks so lame on me, baby. Yeah, baby. I love you so much. Oh. All right. washing machines next time. <laughs> Hell is murky. Thigh, Lord, thigh. Shouldn't that be pie, Lord, pie? Because I make a mean service berry pie. And those service berries are ripe and juicy right now, don't you think? Oh, I think I'm just going to say pie in the next show anyway. <laughs> Soldier and a feared? What need we fear? Who knows it? For none can call our power to account. God, that reminds me. I need to call the power company because the lights in my double wide keep flickering on and off, and not just when it's rocking. <laughs> Who'd have thunk he'd have had so much blood in him? Hell, I would have thought his veins would have been filled with bacon, fat, and cheap beer. <laughs> sure would have been a hell of a lot easier to get that damn spot out. <laughs> All right, everybody, yeah! Thank you, man. Thank you. 